Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, we are going to talk about Rakdos the Hot Stepper in deck number 412. Now that's a reference that I shouldn't... Yeah, it's bad, I know. But anyway, 6 mana, 6-6 six, six flying trample. I mean, that's good, we would play that, right? And when he enters the battlefield, you flip a coin for each creature that's not a demon, devil, or imp. And you destroy each creature whose coin comes up tails. Now, when this card first got previewed, we all went nuts. And it was yet another reason for Crack's Thumb to get another little spike. Now, I've had these in the Mirrodin Binder for years. It's, um, let's face it, there aren't that many decks that really take advantage of it. And so far, I think I have two or three. I think this makes four coin flipping type decks. So, um, Obviously, it's somewhat tribal, but let's get into it. I wanted to show the thumb there first because, you know, eh, it's kind of the obvious in Galoot. But we're going to, since we're already in artifacts, we'll roll through the the mana rocks, as it were. Of course, the soul ring and all of the Rakdos themed artifacts, you know, the, the key rune, the locket. And the signet, I didn't realize full signets were is as expensive as they are till I was listing this. By the way, this is the second deck I, I listed on Architect, and I'm telling you what, I'm falling in love with it. The learning curve, yeah, that first deck was kind of rough, you know, trying to figure everything out, but, ooh, it's nice. And then the other that's not Rakdos affiliated, but it's the, you know, the Rakdos colors and then our last artifact is the binding blade now I love the binding blade uh, but there is you know you can't run it in every deck because it's technically a black color identity artifact even though there's no black in the cost it flips over to the the super demon um, I only got two enchantments so let's go with those uh, Anthem of Rakdos. Now, you'll find I did a whole lot of uh, just Rakdos themed here. You know, it's just, it had Rakdos in it. And you know what? Eh, it kind of works, right? And then we're playing a ton of demons. So we might as well get the contract out there. I mean, if nothing else, it's five mana, draw four, lose four which is almost the logical progression from Ancient Craving. Anyway, speaking of all the crazy Rakdos things, there's uh, the Lord of Riots. Now, that uh, Lost Life this turn, uh, it's, 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 uh, it is a hoop to jump through, but it's not exactly a huge hoop to jump through. Um, I guess we'll continue on with the demons. We got the Blood Gift Demon, Neferox. Now, the Spawn of Mayhem, I still don't understand how that got printed, right? Uh, Desecration Demon, Sower of Discord, Sire of Insanity. I love that each player discards their hand. <clears throat> I don't need no cards. Reaper of the Abyss, Indulgent Tormentor. Oh, you want to talk about a super cool demon? Here we go. Now, this is also pretty cool from what I understand with uh, Ilhark. If, um, you know, obviously Ilhark couldn't be the commander, but if, if Ilhark was in the 99, you know, to pop this guy out in the middle of combat. And since he has first strike, he would hit first, and the life total would become one, and then Ilhark would finish him off. That's pretty cool. Abyssal Persecutor, because, you know, who wants to win anyway? Just that value, four mana, six, six flying trample is really good. Uh, let's see. Is that it for the demons? No, no, that's not it for the demons. Harvester of Souls, because, you know, Creature dies, you get to draw a card. Oh, and we almost forgot Bells and Lock. 
Bells and Locke did it. Um, if you weren't familiar with the Dominara storyline, Bells and Locke went through like all of history and rewrote everything, and like all the biggest, baddest stuff that had done, he rewrote it to where he did it. It wasn't Volrath, it wasn't Yawgmoth, it wasn't none of those. Bells and Locke did it, so I, it just became a thing for me, I guess. Uh, so let's look at Devils now. Have a Torch Fiend. Now, I know you're asking why you have a Torch Fiend. Number one, it is artifact destruction. Number two, you can have some small drops anyway, right? I mean, Hellrider is a, uh, that's a devil right there. Sin Prodder. The original devil, Stone Throwing Devils. Rakdos Cackler. The Light Fiend. And I guess now it's imp time, or singular imp that I, I play. But, you know. Now, these last four creatures do not apply to any of Rakdos's chosen, I guess which we would call it. But there are ones in there that I really want. We've got Ocom. You're flipping coins, right? Uh, it seemed, uh, I don't know. This may be a... Uh, um, mm, a flex spot, if you will, for when I get a bigger, stronger, cooler demon. Blood Speaker. Now, this is, um, I don't figure this is going to matter as far as we're not going to be flipping a coin for Blood Speaker, okay? Because the whole idea is it's a demon tutor. Well, uh, it's, it's a, uh, anyway. But, I do like the fact that that last line, whenever a demon comes into play to your control, you pop him back to your hand from the yard. So that's neat. Um, lava Zombie. Now, it's weird, I know, but the reason why Lava Zombie's in here is to get that second activation off of Rakdos. Because there may be times when somebody is waiting for you to, you know, general up and then they flood the board because they don't have to worry about it anymore because black and red are not really known for blinking. So uh, so we just lava zombie, put Rakdos back in our hand, and cast Rakdos again. And then our our last creature, of course, is the Deathbringer Regent because, you know, got to have some way to blow up the world. And, you know, having a 5-6 flyer left over is not bad. So let's look at the sorceries. I, I kind of have these... Because when I listed the deck, uh, you uh, by category, so I guess let's do some some card draw here. We have a sign of blood, a read the bones, downward pact, uh, ancient cravings. Not really card draw, but uh, it, it is a diabolic tutor, so that's I mean it's not bad. And then painful lessons. I think all the rest of this is removal. Wow, I've never actually looked at the art on the hands of Painful Lesson. That's beautiful. Okay, let's do removal. You know we got to have Dreadbore. Bituminous Blast. Mizium Mortars. When did Shattering Spree get so expensive? Uh, there again, I'm... I'm not all, all about pricing or anything. I, I just, you know, I play with the cards I have. And, yeah, I'll pick up here and there to when I see cards I, I need for specific decks. But uh, I didn't realize, ooh, are we playing that many Shattering Sprees, folks? I mean, it's great. It's like the next step down to um, the Overload one. Extinguish All Hope. Y'all know why I'm running that. Yes, that's right, because it's cheap. Uh, <laughs> Ruinous Path. Rakdos Return, while not technically... It's his possessive card. Yeah, I know that. And, it, you know, dealing damage. That's mainly why it's in there is for the fireball aspect. And then, of course, Ashes to Ashes. Now, I love me some Ashes to Ashes, because this card, you exile two creatures for five damage. Oh, that's fine. I'll do that all day long. Then we've got Instance. Now, of course, we're going to start Instance with Bedevil. 
and then terminate. And we're going to back the camera up because as the cards stack up in that box, I have yet to, uh, to figure out that particular quandary. There. Um, murder, Doomblade, Tragic Slip, Terror, and yes, Diabolic Edict. I love the Diabolic Edict for those Voltron decks because a lot of times you won't be able to target them, but if they've only got the one creature, just as good. Uh, Magma Quake, Dark Ritual, because I mean, let's face it, we're black, so I mean, Dark Ritual, why not? Rakdos Char, it was really hard for me not to do just like straight Rakdos Tribal with Rakdos in every word, but. Yeah, that would have been really good. I don't know that it would have been any worse than what we've got here, but eh. And then Showstopper. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll admit the this was the first card in the deck. The only reason why it's in there is because this name is in Rakdos's name. And you know what? It's not bad. Especially as say, until end of turn, creatures you control gain. When this creature dies, it deals two damage to target creature and opponent controls. So, eh, it's not terrible. It's a okay. Yeah, it's terrible. Flavor wise, though, the party don't start till he walks in. And now let's look at our non-basic lands. Of course, y'all know I'm running a Rogue's Passage, because why not? Uh, Rick's Maddie. Uh, and we're going to go through the duels. Blood Crypt, Cinder Barons, Alcum Refuge, Bloodfell Caves, the Guildgate, of course, Carnarium, Terrestrial Sinks, Rand's Guild Promenade, and Evolving Wilds, even though I know we shouldn't be playing it. Two-color decks, I don't really... Eh, it doesn't bother me as much. Well, that is what I have got for Mr. Rakdos the Showstopper. Uh, like I said, the deck is listed over on the Architect. Uh, Y'all will find the link down below. And I appreciate everybody watching. I give a shout-out to uh, all the patrons. I do appreciate y'all. Everything you do, you, you keep the lights on, folks. I appreciate it. But right now, I think we are going to shuffle and cut.